What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Cedar Flags. So in this episode we are working more on the entrance plaza. We're redoing a bunch as you can see on the screen right now. But we're also adding a couple shops and one flat ride. So I didn't really want to go over the top in this episode. And that actually brings me to a good point. There's not much to name in this episode. There's really nothing to name. Usually I like to have you guys name stuff in the comments. This time, we're not going to have that, so I do want to ask you guys, if you want to see in this series, do you want me to focus on smaller areas and talk more about each unique kind of aspect of the smaller areas, or w would you rather see me build wider, more broad areas and just kind of go over the general, you know, themes of what I did in the episode? So let me know in the comments, and uh, <laughs> speaking of not naming or names, we actually did go ahead and name our coaster from the previous episode, and we called it Alpine Spirit. I believe that was an exact name that somebody came up with, and I actually really, really like that name. Uh, I actually got a lot of names from people that had something to do with like a Western feel or the Western theme, and I didn't really want to use them. They were a lot of good names, don't get me wrong, but I didn't want to use them for this particular coaster because it's not in a Western part of the park. Now, in the future, we are definitely going to have some themed areas of the park, and Western is probably going to be one of the bigger portions of the park. So save those names for then, and definitely let me know when we get to that point. But uh, I also, just before we move on, I want to mention that I made a promo video for that coaster, and that link should be popping up on the screen right about now in the top right. And it's got a link to the workshop collection for Alpine, or not Alpine Valley, for, uh, that was weird, for Cedar Flags, and it, of course, includes Alpine Spirit. So if you want to go check that out, go ahead over there and download the coaster for yourself and put it in your park. And, of course, on Twitter, let me know what you do with it, show, or share some screenshots. But, all right, so what we're doing now is putting some planters in the main entrance. It needed something. It really wasn't... I think I just ended up putting down the pavement just to kind of get us started. And then I, I look back and I was like, this isn't very good. It's not a very good entrance. So what I'm trying to do is kind of spruce it up a little bit, put some scenery in there, and then, of course, put some lights in there because we needed to somehow get some lighting happening in this area. And I didn't just want to put the standard light posts in here. So I went ahead and I made my own brick and uh, mortar kind of uh, lamp base, I guess you could call it. Um, again, that is a blueprint that I've put in the collection for this series. So all of these little things that I, I use, any blueprint that I use, like even the brick uh, planter, I don't know what you would call it, the base right there. I, I put those blueprints together and I, those are going to be in the collection in the Steam Workshop. So anytime you see me place a blueprint, go over to the Steam collection and check it out. That link is always in the description of each one of these videos. So, uh, yeah, anyway, we're just kind of making it look good, and one of the big things that I've noticed about this game is if you are trying, if you're struggling to make a park look real, it's, it's more just filling out as much space with, like, nature as you can, and just focusing on those little details. Like, I could have left the grass in the planters alone, but just putting that little ground cover in there makes it look like this area has been intentionally, I guess, placed, so... Uh, moving on here, I kept getting this weird, like, graphical glitch on the paths you guys could kind of see here and there. It's, it, like, it covers part of a square, and then it just leaves, like, a chunk not covered. It's like a weird glitch. I don't know what's causing it. It might just be that the terrain's not flat, but it only seems to happen in the square grid path mode. So, I, I don't know, I just had to figure a way around it, and most of the times it was just deleting it and placing it down enough times until it kind of corrected itself. But, um, yeah, so when I was building for this episode, it was, it was like, I was trying to kind of picture in my mind how I want the park to look. We're very early in this park, and I just, I needed to kind of think out into the future and try to think of, like, how I want the whole layout of the park to work. And I think having this one really large I guess it's not really large, but this long path right down the middle of the park from the entrance perspective is a really good way to do things, and I always like doing this, even back into, like, 
Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 day, or yeah, the era of playing that game. Um, just having that long entrance, so guests walk in and they just look down this long entrance and they just see people having fun on the rides and all of the shops and everything. And it's just always been the way I do things, so I did definitely try to incorporate that here. Again, we're going to see the park expand and we're going to see how that's all used later on. But right now I'm placing some some shops down and you'll see me trying to kind of figure out the path situation. Now, the pathing system was terrible in the alpha. It got a lot better. Right now it's up to a point where it's pretty acceptable. It's not it's not terrible. It can get finicky and you're trying to you're seeing me try to kind of place this this building down and get that middle grass section of the in between the paths to disappear. I uh, couldn't do it. And eventually I found a workaround for that and uh, I'll show you that when we get to it. But yeah, the paths, I feel like if there was a way to have them, if we could like make an outline of the plaza that we want to make in the paths and then just maybe have like a tool to fill it in like a paint bucket for the path. I don't know if I'm describing that correctly, but it would make things a whole lot easier, especially for building these kind of plazas. But anyway, you can see me right now trying to build this building and <laughs> yeah, work with the path work. But this building, I wanted to take some influence from the, obviously from the gates building, but I didn't want to do it entirely in the same style. So I, there's a little bit of a, of a difference here, but yeah, you're seeing me place the cement block now. I figured this door would be kind of like an employee door. And so I just kind of hid that, that uh, grass spot with like a, some sort of doorstep or stoop. I don't know how you'd want to describe that, but it in the end looks great. Um, again, I, I don't know. I try to build everything in this game to look good and to have like a function. Like putting that door there was definitely not something that was needed, but you would need the employees to get into this building somehow. And that's just how I figured it, <laughs> that's how it would work. So. I do like to kind of keep that mentality when I build in this game, and uh, yeah. So right now you're you're seeing me kind of screw around with the the roof here. I didn't end up using this roof design. I actually go ahead and delete this in in a few minutes here, but I didn't like the roof because the the slopes weren't the same. And in a sense, it was kind of cool, but at the same time. It just didn't look great on this building when I stepped back and I looked at it, like in contrast to the gate. So ended up deleting it and we ended up going to a more simple roof design. And in the end, that came out uh, way better in my opinion. So yeah, we only placed two shops in this episode. And the reason I placed the kind of souvenir type shops around here is because when guests first get into the park, I don't think they're going to be hungry and thirsty. They might be thirsty, but they wouldn't be so hungry. Uh, if you go to a theme park in real life, you try to eat before you enter the park because you know once you get in there, it's gonna they're going to charge you so much money for, for food. It's unbelievable. But uh, yeah, you'll notice in real parks that the food tends to be toward the middle and the back of the park because they know once you've walked around a bit, you're going to get start to get hungry and thirsty and you're gonna be able to pay those prices as, as you get to the back because really, that's that's your only option. So, uh, I there's a couple of things about this game that I wish were in this game that aren't. And one of the big things is I, I'm thinking about building like a custom locker, like plaza type shop thing. If you go to a real park and you like, say you bring some sort of like bag or something just to keep some extra like hoodies in or something, a lot of the times you can get to the park and then rent like a, a little locker for like 25 cents. So I'm thinking about putting one of those in. Unfortunately, there's no locker like uh, prop or anything. So we're going to have to maybe get a little creative with that. But just little little details like that really make these parks in this game look that much better. And if you guys can think of anything like that, please leave me a comment because I am really I'm down to do something cool like that in a park. Uh, I, I really want to keep this park more on the realistic side, but right now you're seeing me put a bunch of lighting down. This was pretty needed. After I put the lamps with the bases, I, I don't know, in those uh, little planters, I realized they aren't the brightest the brightest bulbs in the box. Does that, is that a saying? 
But, uh, yeah, so I went around and I placed some... I just tried to hide some lights up in, in the... under the roof of the gates. That's actually a really good way of doing it. If you're trying to find a way to light your plazas and walkways, just kind of tuck those... tuck those lights away in, like, a building or even in a tree. It's, uh, it's very possible that you can do that, but, um... Yeah, anyway, right now we're going ahead and placing the merry-go-round. Of course we need some sort of carousel in the park because it's just, it's a staple of theme parks around the world and carnivals, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. We're just doing some detailing around here. We're going to go into the live portion of this video. It's probably going to be a little shorter than normal, but we're going to talk a little bit more about what we're planning on doing here in the future. Maybe we'll go into a little bit of what we just did and what you guys watch in the time lapse. But uh, yeah, guys, I'll see you over in the live portion. All right, guys, so here we are at Alpine Spirit, the entrance from last time, and you'll notice a couple things. First of all, you can probably see my cursor now because I've kind of figured out a way to get my recording, I don't know, all figured out and stuff. So yeah, the cursor's back. That's gonna be good for the future, and I hope this works out for the long run, but uh, time will tell, I guess. But anyway, back to the actual build. You'll notice a couple more bushes around here, and that's just to cover up those lights and just to add a little bit of green space across these paths. And then, of course, the benches that I placed down and some uh, trash bins here. But yeah, not much else has changed except the sign now reads Alpine Spirit, which is great. I do really wish that these signs were a little bit better in this game, and I do think they're eventually probably going to put more signage stuff options into the game. I, I don't know if you guys know, but I am a sign maker in real life, so yeah, we need some more. If anybody from uh, Frontier is actually watching this video, which would be awesome, uh, <laughs> yeah, if, if we need some more middle size signs like we have a bunch of small signs and a couple bigger signs but we don't have a lot of options for mid-size customizable signs and we should also probably get a bunch of uh individual letter sets so instead of typing alpine spirit here i would actually like physically place the a l p i n e you know it, as actual props that would be awesome and that would really change the whole dynamic of sign making in this game I don't know, just a suggestion, I, I guess if you guys like it, hit that thumbs up button. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, this is the brand new look to the plaza out in the gate. So, of course, you saw me take a lot of time to do all of the planters. And then, of course, the second big part in the time lapse was this hat stand and just a memento, which I believe sells something. I don't what. Uh, snow globes, crystal balls, and sci-fi radios, because, yeah, I guess it's just a small souvenir shop. I do really wish the on, the on-ride, like, photo sections were a thing in this game. As far as I know, they are not just yet. Hopefully those come into play soon, because I don't know if I talked about this yet. I typically play, t uh, theme park games with the mentality of, Basically, the rides are free, and we just make our money on the gate and the souvenirs and all that kind of stuff. So, it's not a very viable option at this point, apparently, in Planet Coaster. I've heard a lot of people on the subreddit talk about how they... It's not as easy to do, which is fine because we are in sandbox mode, but that is one thing that I really like. I don't really like charging people for rides. Like, if you go to a theme park, in the, in the States at least... There's not really, I don't think of, I don't know if there's any that you go to the theme park and then you have to pay to get on the ride. Now, I could be wrong about that, and I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments if I am, but most theme parks traditionally that I think of charge you for the gate and then they'll get you for those like seven or eight dollar drinks and uh, twelve dollar burgers or whatever, but you know you don't charge to go on to a ride. Now, I do like that this game has the priority pass, which we have on Alpine Spirit, and we're gonna have on most of our coasters. No, definitely all of our coasters, but flat rides, not so much, um, unless it's, eh, I don't know. I can't really think of any flat rides that we're gonna put that on, but it's a really good way to get some, like, residual income around the park, and, uh, 
I don't know, I, when we open, which is another question, I'm not sure when we're going to open this park. I'm thinking in the next episode, so stick around for that. But um, I do want to get probably some sort of drink stand set up. Uh, and I'm thinking of maybe working kind of this area, kind of taking this path out down here a little bit across, or right next to this kind of cliff side. And then I'm thinking of maybe doing some more terrain forming next to the path so that this path kind of just goes down like a, a bit of a ravine. Could be kind of cool. Um, and then in here, I'm thinking of maybe doing some sort of smaller roller coaster. I'm not sure. Maybe another flat ride or a thrill ride would be kind of cool. And then, of course, you guys have all suggested that instead of a monorail like I originally had planned, we go ahead and put a train in. So... Definitely thinking about doing that instead. Um, the train is right here. And, of course, it looks like this. But, yes, I'm thinking we're going to do this. Now, the one thing about the train in this game is that there are no sections for the track that allow people... Or, allow paths over the track. So, all of the tracks that we build are going to have to be above or below the path. Because you can't walk over them. Uh, so it's going to be kind of a design challenge at this point, and I'm looking forward to that. And I'm kind of thinking while I'm over here, we're going to have the train kind of over here in the station, and then it'll be like the first stop. And then, of course, we'll have the train kind of go through maybe a tunnel here and then kind of wander through the middle of this coaster. Now, I had said that I didn't really want to put anything in the middle of this coaster, but I do think that it would be kind of cool to have like a small uh, train ride going through here. Just looking out the sides of the train, you could see the roller coaster zooming past. It'd be really cool. So we're going to eventually have a train go through from here down to here and probably in the back and then maybe have like two more stops just to kind of hit all four corners of the map. Pretty cool idea. I'm not sure how we're going to do that. Like we have to, we have to build back to that, to the far corners to have a train like make sense, but I think... At the same time, we have to build our train with everything in mind. So, yeah, we'll just kind of build as we go, I guess. And, uh, I guess we should talk about the main path here and what we're going to be doing on this side. Now, probably going to be doing something similar to this with another ride over here. I may eventually actually adjust this path because I noticed that I had placed it and this is right in the center of it. And if we do another path on the other side, people are going to have to, like, walk around this tree not such a good layout, so I'm kind of thinking we go this way with it, and then go out this way, and then kind of fill this area with uh, some sort of ride. And then, of course, over here, we're going to do some more buildings. Like I said, the locker idea is probably pretty cool. We'll probably do that around here. And then maybe start to get into some sort of food area over here. Now, I had talked a little bit about moving the food into the middle and the farther parts of the park, but I do think that people coming straight into the park might get thirsty. So uh, we'll, of course, give them some sort of option, but there's really not much else to place down. I mean, there's a ton of options for food, a bunch of options actually for for drinks, and then the gift shops, we are pretty much... Uh, we have two-thirds of them already built, so a balloon shop around here is a must of course if you guys played roller coaster tycoon at all you'll know that the balloons are just kind of a staple of the theme park sandbox games now for for whatever reason but yeah i guess that's pretty much it for this video it was a little short but like i said if you guys want to see more focus on smaller portions of the park like this or do you guys want to see me like build like a larger portion of the park and in the time lapse, kind of just skip over the detail work and just kind of go with the more general concepts of what I did. Um, I guess it's up to you. This this series is still very young, so I'm looking for ways to m improve it, of course. So definitely let me know in the comments. And of course, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, of course, thumbs down. Make sure you're subscribed if you aren't for whatever reason. And uh, guys, I'll see you in the next one when we build our train and fill out some other areas of the park. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you back here in Cedar Flags.